Mike and Shane uh, like to say that I deserved it at the time. Uh, fuck, man, 2011, I was <laughs> like, a, I was, I was a bit of a whippersnapper. But if I'm honest, a little bit of like insider gossip. Like Mike and Shane were like two of my best friends, like best friends, man. Like, you know, to the degree that like on a weekly, on a weekly basis, like you know, they were coming to my place for like Sunday dinners, and my like wife was cooking up an absolute storm and we'd be playing like mario party and yeah dude like it was just like it was just our like our little tight-knit group um so yeah like they they had always talked about it um and like look mike, mike and shane especially back then they didn't uh i don't think they their inclusions into uh tmdk certainly weren't things that were discussed lightly there was like always heavy 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 discussion of uh like any members who were then going to become a part of um team decay but they they had always said they were like you know like we, we feel like we really want to bring you in as the first you know our first ever recruit like we we don't want team decay to just be like a tag team we want it to be you know one of the most dominating like factions in pro wrestling so it was, yeah, it was, it was a, it was a big thing. I still, I still would have doubted the fact that you know they were my two best mates, like as if they were going to put someone else in Team DK before they fucking put me in Team DK. But you know, like just even, even though they did do that, like at the time, like it was really starting. <laughs> I, was, I, was, <laughs> I was starting. I was really starting to like get my bearings and stuff, especially in EPW. Um, 2011 is the first time that I. Uh, that I won the EPW championship and things just started to like, you know, start, things just started clicking, man. I, I, I really started like to understand pro wrestling um, from various different aspects that, that together started to culminate to me being more of like a complete package. And I think once like Mike and Shane sort of yeah. saw that and, realized the direction i was going in i think that that's that's ultimately when they made their decision to um induct me as the first member of uh team dk which was pretty fucking cool so to be to be honest like the the concept of it like it, it sounds very similar to like bullet club like building that way but happening like years prior you know what i mean like it it's a it's a really cool concept and it's cool that it came out of australia and you know tmdk has gone international you know what i mean like you know those references made on nxt uh wwe television uh you know you know over in japan as well um yeah. but you know during your time with tmdk you know you you're actually tag team champions with uh jonah rock aka oh, bronson was. reed uh, how did you, yeah, dude, how was that run, man? How was working with the big dude? It was fun, man. Like, uh, Jonah's like one of my, you know, closest friends. He was actually one of the groomsmen's in, uh, in my wedding party, which was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, like me and Jonah have like so much history together. And it was, it was sort of at the time, uh, where, where like Mike and Mike and Shane had gone away and, um, you know, like they, they were doing their own thing and, myself slater and jonah had become like really tight knit and i was actually traveling regularly over to um to adelaide uh to work for wrestle rampage it was like zero one at the time um yeah. and yeah like just myself jonah uh slater like we just started to create this like really strong bond and I, I always kind of wanted to like get involved in like tag team wrestling it was something that i really hadn't done at the time and I'd spoken to, to Jonah about it a number of times, particularly as a way to get Jonah booked regularly in EPW. Because, um, like, the first time, if my memory serves me correctly, the first time Jonah came over to EPW was with Sexton, uh, now Dude Hudson, uh, Duke Hudson, and uh, they worked the Armstrongs. Um, and fantastic match. Just, it was brilliant. Like, it was something that like EPW hadn't like. I didn't feel like they really like seen prior, um, and it was something that got me like really excited about tag team wrestling. So it was something that Jonah and I discussed a number of times. And fuck, man, I think I think me and Jonah had maybe like three or four shirt designs organized and ready to go <laughs> before we'd even become a fucking tag team. 
but yeah, it worked beautifully because um, at the time I was, um, again, some more inside glass. At the time, I was helping a book, and like my book, uh, my booking partner at the time was actually Nate Dooley. And I was pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing for Jonah and Slater to be like regular, um, you know, regular attractions in EPW. Um, and yeah, like they went for it and stuff. And uh, thankfully the whole, the whole thing with like me and Jonah got over really well. And it was a really great way. Like I kind of, I had like, you know, being a booker and stuff, I didn't, didn't want to go down that route where I was like fucking booking myself into main events and, all that type of bullshit. Yeah. And I think at the time it was time for EPW to to build some like new main eventers. And so the idea was for me and Jonah to like drop down the card to more so work with the up and comers. And in particular, of course, the yeah. up and coming um tag team division in EPW. So that was something that like I really cherish, man. It was something I loved doing. Like we were working regularly with the drop kicks and um we were working with McMassive a lot. Um, and like we were, we were working with like members of the solution and stuff. It was just like a really cool up and coming, uh, tag team division at the time for EPW. And yeah, something that, yeah, myself and Jonah got to, um, head up, which was like really cool, really cool. You know, you mentioned having the shirt designs before you guys even had the tag team. I kind of feel like that's what like two pro wrestlers that get on the pissed that are mates together, they would do, oh, mate, let's start fucking designing Dude. tag team shirts, brother, let's do it. <laughs> Dude, I think it was just like, <clears throat> fuck, man, I don't know if you remember, but, like, Sex Rock were just, like, the fucking thing. Like, I loved Sex Rock. Fucking Sex Rock yeah. was the fucking best. And, what, like, when Sexton and Jonas started coming out with all those promos that they were doing online and stuff, I was just like, <clears throat> I was like, I've just not seen shit like this before. It's so creative. It's so fresh. It's so new. Like in particular, man, like the, I think it was like the Mortal Kombat um, promo that they released online. And my mind, dude, was just fucking blowing. I was like, this is phenomenal. I think from that is what spurred like a lot of like mine and Jonah's like thought processes and stuff going forward. I think, and funnily enough, like me and Jonah did like a like a monster shirt. That's like where like we were like super duper and enlarged, and we were like sort of like domineering over like a city and stuff, as if we were kind of like That's King awesome. Kong and Godzilla. It was fucking yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like now That's thinking funny. about it, it's it's just funny that we had shirts like that made, and then we did like a like a Street Fighter choose your character where like. Jonah was portrayed as Blunker and I was portrayed as Zangief. It was just fucking cool, man. That's just perfect. Super, That's awesome. Super fun time. Yeah, really fun time. But, you know, as far as, you know, like for you, when you when you first broke into the business, like, you know, were you bright-eyed and bushy-tailed to the point of going, hey, it's WWE or bust? Like, was that like your be-all and end goal? And like, you know, once, how long were you in the business once you realized? 